Welcome to our lecture online. In these two examples, we're trying to determine the measures for angles 1, 2, and 3 using the methods we've learned so far. And notice here that, again, these indicators mean that these two lines are parallel. This means that these two lines are parallel. Same over here, that these two lines here are parallel. Starting with the exercise up there, notice we have 70 degrees and two. These are what we call alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are indeed equal to one another, so therefore we can claim that the measure of angle two must also be 70 degrees. Then we can take a look at angle one and 70 degrees. We know that those are what we call consecutive interior angles, and those measures must add up to 180 degrees, which means that the measure of angle one plus 70 degrees must equal 180 degrees. Moving that across, we have the measure of angle one is equal to 180 degrees minus 70 degrees. Therefore, the measure of angle one must be equal to 110 degrees. Now that we have the measure of angle one and we have angle three here, we know that these are alternate interior angles, so therefore we can claim that the measure of angle three must also equal 110 degrees because they must have equal measures. Starting with the exercise on the bottom, notice that this is a 90 degree angle, and notice that one is what we call a consecutive interior angle, and by the rule is that Consecutive interior angles must add up to 180 degrees, which means that the measure of angle 1 plus 90 degrees equals to 180 degrees, subtracting 90 from both sides. The measure of angle 1 equals 180 degrees minus 90 degrees. Therefore, the measure of angle 1 must equal 90 degrees. We can simply realize that when we have consecutive interior angles and one of them is a right angle, then the other one must be a right angle as well. Now we don't have any relation between the angle here and the angle here and two and three, but we are told here that this angle is 120 degrees and the angle three is what we call opposite to the 120 degree angle and opposite angles must be equal. Therefore, we can claim that the measure of angle three equals 120 degrees. And finally, we can see here that angle 2 and angle 3 are interior consecutive angles, and we know that their measures must add up to 180 degrees, which means that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. We can replace the measure of angle 3 by 120 degrees, so the measure of angle 2 plus 120 degrees equals 180 degrees. Subtracting 120 degrees from both sides, we can then say that the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 minus 120. And finally, the measure of angle 2 must therefore equal 60 degrees. And so you can see that in a very systematic fashion, using our postulates and, and uh, theorems, we can find the measure of any angle whenever we have two lines that are parallel to one another and we have transversals. And that's how it's done.